and missed in that time. So we'll take a few moments for uh, silence in memory and in solidarity with those captives. My name is Regina Chayut. I'm the cantor here at Temple Beth Emeth. I would like to invite my colleague and friend, Rabbi Gabriel Pescador of the Reconstructionist Congregation, and my husband, Avishai Chayut, to join me as we sing this prayer for the safe return of the captives. Oh, me 
Good evening, I'm Taryn. Uh, I went on the recent Jewish Federation of Greater Ann Arbor Solidarity Mission to Israel, and this is what I wrote when I returned. October 7th, 2023 was horrific, obviously, but it was the response to October 7th from friends, colleagues, and previously respected organizations that was a gut punch to my core. Given that I'm someone who has fiercely fought for diversity, equity, inclusion, anti-oppression, and social justice, it was surreal to experience the immediate and unquestioning misuse of these ideals against Jews, against me. Everything I thought to be true was false. In the days following October 7th, my understanding of the world turned upside down. In all my time fighting for others who hold historically marginalized identities, I had let my own historically marginalized Jewish identity be put aside. Jew hate was left to simmer right beneath the surface. Now many of whom I had loved and trusted felt free to unabashedly declare their Jew hatred in a multitude of both loud and quiet ways. After October 7th, I felt a strong and overwhelming need to get to Israel, to go and to be there and I felt an overwhelming need to get away from Ann Arbor and the daily gaslighting and microaggressions from those around me. Although I had never been to Israel, I needed to see, to feel, to be present in the spaces that were impacted by October 7th. I needed to be with my people. I'm not religious, I'm more of an atheist, yet it felt that God had a hand in connecting me with the Jewish Federation of Greater Ann Arbor and the partnership with Nahalal. The solidarity mission brought out every emotion. Anger, rage, sadness, hope, despair, love, hate, pride, fear, more rage, and even more love. And was exactly what I needed to fill the hole that was left in me by those who let me down so severely over the past six months. We were able to bear witness at the sites attacked by Hamas. We visited art exhibitions created in response to October 7th. We listened to journalists, survivors, displaced families, relatives of hostages, community response teams, a social media influencer, members of the IDF, and representatives from hostage headquarters. We heard bombs dropping and saw Gaza. We volunteered with an organization that jumped in to help IDF soldiers when the government failed them. We stayed with families. It felt like home. The thread throughout every interaction was love and life, return the hostages and protecting the soldiers. Over the past six months, I have watched video clips from the Nova Festival. The only sound was the crunching of dry grass as they ran through the open fields away from Hamas. As I now walked in the same fields at Nova, I heard the same sound on the same grass, a sickening closeness, incredibly important and necessary to me. At Hostage Square, I found myself looking for the protesters, looking for the individuals who would vandalize the sculptures and displays in the plaza. There were none, and there would be none. This was Israel, not the US. On my last night, I was alone in Tel Aviv. I walked along the beach. For all the hateful, quote, river to the sea comments I see on my social media feeds, I was able to actually see the sea. After months of heartbreak, seeing from the river to the sea, posted online by friends and colleagues, I felt that I was almost able to reclaim that sea, whose beach was filled with Jewish life and Jewish love. What do I now do with this now that I'm back in Michigan? One volunteer group asked us to raise money for an ice cream truck for the soldiers. Another community said they need funds for equipment to convert pistols into assault rifles. The journalist we met with, had, met with had the most difficult request. He told me that it is the job of the American Jews to start combating the inaccurate and harmful propaganda spreading Jew hate. We must be louder. We must put ourselves on the line to fight this fight here in the US. My flight back to the US was so wild that it made the international news. Wind shear, landing at a different airport, emergency medical responders on the plane. I happened to share a lift with someone 
flight, from the flight as we navigated hotels and rescheduled flights. As she got out at her terminal, she said, next year in Jerusalem. Yes, next year in Jerusalem. Am Yisrael Chai. I would like to welcome Simone Yehuda to join us on the Bima. Simone is a poet, and she's also a child of Holocaust survivors. And she's going to share with us a poem that she wrote in response to October 7th. Hi, I'm Simone Yehuda. A um, little bit about my parents. My relationship with Israel comes through my father, Walter Judah, and the Holocaust. He was born in Berlin. When he was 17 years old, his father, a diagnostician, was at a patient's home when they received word that the patient's son had been stoned to death. My father was put on a train that night to Switzerland and ultimately to France, where my grandmother on my mother's side, Blanche Molino, was a leader of the French resistance in Lyon. She saved many Jews, including my father. That's how my parents met. Although my mother and father fled to the States, where they married and had four children, his parents and sister fled to Jerusalem and lived there the rest of their lives. My father, a chemist, invented a machine that changes salt water to fresh water for Israel. I used to call him Walter the Desalter. <laughs> I think he enjoyed it. I don't know. As a result, I have been to Israel many times and fell in love with its beauty and miraculous accomplishments. Although my parents certainly thrived and had outward successful lives in Massachusetts, because of the loss of their beloved homes and family, family members, in Germany and in France, they were left with a deep sense of exile, which their children inherited. October 7 brought it all back to me. I eventually wrote this poem, What is Happening in Israel and Gaza is Breaking My Heart All Over Again. Exile re-encountered. You know, ever since October 7, I haven't even been able to count to 11. I lose myself, get stuck halfway through every single wretched day. My parents' eternal loss of home, again coating my soul like a secret poem. I try not to imagine the unimaginable slaughters of so many fathers, sons, mothers, and daughters. I struggle to learn how to abide the ambigu ambiguity of the other side. Perspective was and is what matters most and what to do when it's become a ghost. Today I am seared with the kind of pain that keeps me awake, leaves a dark stain on the fragile skeletons of deathless grief, birthing anew, old mountains of disbelief. I must endure yet one more time the hopelessness, the endless climb to a world of safety, imagined or real, where I'll be allowed to really feel. Thanks. know this melody to Psalm 121, this popular Israeli melody, please do join with me. Oh, 
עושה שמיים וארץ, אל ייתן למות רגליך, אל ינום שומרך, הנה לא ינום ולא יישן שומר ישראל. ארנאי שומרך, ארנאי צילך, על יד ימינך, יומם השמש לא יככה, וירח בלילה, ארנאי ישמורך מקורה, ישמור ארנאי ישמור צאתך ובואך מעתה ועד עולם מעתה ועד עולם honor to invite Brad Axelrod to our beam. Seven of us from Ann Arbor had the honor of participating in a solidarity mission to Israel the last week in March. We stayed in Nahalal, our partnership community in Israel. During our time, we participated in volunteer activities in the north, spoke with members of Kibbutz Givim who had just returned to the Western Negev after living in a hotel for almost six months. We saw a moving art exhibit honoring those murdered on October 7, experienced trauma therapy with horses in Nahalal, listened to a show, social worker's work in treating soldiers with PTSD, and heard the story of a woman stuck in her safe room with her family for 30 hours who was finally evacuated by IDF soldiers while two terrorists were hiding in the home. We visited the site of the Nova Music Festival massacre. We heard an archaeologist describe how his expertise is used in finding missing persons, spoke with families of hostages, and were confronted with a mind-numbing gravel parking lot of the remains of hundreds of vehicles in which individuals were murdered on the roadways in Israel on October 7. Entering the welcome hall at Ben Gurion Airport, one no longer sees the huge wall posters of smiling faces celebrating the land of Israel. Instead, they're replaced with faces of photographs of all 134 Israeli hostages currently in captivity in Gaza. Along both sides of the hallway is a long line of each of their names, ages, and faces. The people of Israel are united in seeing their utmost aim being the return of the presumed 100 living hostages and the remains of 34 who are thought to have died or been killed since being taken captive. The attention devoted to those killed, injured, and still in the hands of Hamas is the priority of Israel. This is their focus. This is their goal. Despite the unspeakable loss of life and security, Israel's spirit is robust. Her promise for the future is irrepressible. The most often heard comment during the trip was, thank you for being here. And my response was, I can't wait to be back. When Edith Ohel's son alone was taken hostage from the Nova Festival by Hamas terrorists, she decided the only way she knew how to move forward was to bring music, light, and optimism to the world around her in the hope that this would somehow bring strength to Alon, a talented musician, during his captivity. She set up a piano in Hostage Square in Tel Aviv and in cities around the world to bring awareness to the plight of the hostages in a positive way. She arranged to have a concert of Alon's favorite musicians at Kibbutz Zikim, a community on the border with Gaza. 
They placed enormous speakers pointed towards Gaza, hoping that the music would bring comfort to any Israeli captive that it might reach. Alon's friends asked Israeli musician Avishai Kohen to change the chorus of his song, Shuvi Alai, Return to Me, to Shuvu Aleinu, Return to Us. He gladly did so and joined Alon's friends to make this moving recording. The next offering contains a verse from Hosea, 
in which God promises to bring a covenant of unity that includes all creatures. A promise that there will be no more war and that all will safely rest. According to the Midrash, this verse from Hosea is part of a tenfold blessing for the future. Derived from potent verses from our sacred texts, including the book of Isaiah, which promises that the sound of weeping and crying will be no more, that there will be no more groaning, no more despair. May such a future come to the people of Israel and to all the people of the world and to all the creatures of our planet. Bimhera biyamenu. May it happen quickly in our time. Chayat hasad evim of hashamayim veremes haadama vekeshet vecherev umilcha maheshpur min haaretz vehish kavtim lavetach min haaretz vehish kavtim lavetach on that day. I will make a covenant with the beasts and the birds and with all creatures that walk upon this earth and bow and sword and battle will disappear from the land so that all may safely rest so that all may safely rest I'm Jerry Sorokin, the Executive Director of Beth Israel Congregation. This is a prayer for the state and people of Israel. God, our strength and protection, we pray for the state of Israel in this devastating time of war, a time of shock and a time of deep grief. Our hearts are breaking. We pray for the lives of the civilians and the soldiers, the hostages captured by Hamas. Watch over them, shelter them, bring them home. We pray for the souls of the innocent victims who were brutally murdered. We ask you to send comfort and strength to the grieving. Send healing to the injured in body and in spirit and strength and wisdom to those who are helping to put those families back together physically and mentally and spiritually. We pray for our family in Israel in this time of crisis and tragedy. Adonai, watch over Israel and spread your Sukkot Shalom over the land and over all our siblings who live there. Shine your light on Israel's leaders that they may act from your true intentions and not from their own. Protect those who defend Israel. Let them be safe and victorious over those who attacked our people. May they root out terrorists while preserving the lives of innocent civilians in Gaza and create a pathway toward true and lasting peace. Adonai, let peace, cessation of hostilities, 
Rain down from the heavens like a mighty storm. Let it wash away the hatred and the bloodshed as we ask you to gather the souls of the victims into your eternal shelter. May they find peace in your presence and may the light of their spirits shine on us and illuminate our way. Amen. Amen. Wow. Incredible. Tonight, we experience a profound journey through this past six months, feeling the pain, the anguish that had gripped us since the unexpected Shmini Atzeret, October 7th. Who would have thought that six months later, 
we would still be on an ongoing war. And the, and the worry of the plight, over 130 hostages. Amidst this tor turmoil, what truly touched me was the remarkable unity amongst the Jewish people. Never before have we witnessed such unity. It was truly moving to see Jews from all backgrounds embracing each other, setting aside the differences, and connecting on a profound level. In that unity, we saw the essence of our neshama, our soul. I was deeply moved by the images and videos I encountered. They brought me to tears more than anything I have seen. They reached into the depths of my soul. My tears flowed more freely when I reflected on this unity. I recently heard a powerful account from Sapir Cohen, one of the released hostages. She described a moment in the tunnel when the terrorist brought her into a room where he was watching TV and showed her footage of a rally in Tel Aviv with chilling clarity. He remarked, look, when all the Jews are like this together, they are very, very strong. Even a terrorist recognizes the strength that emerges when we stand united. So what do we do now? We must leave tonight with a message of hope. We have no choice but to remain united. The terrorists sought to harm us because of our Jewish identity. The forces of anti-Semitism to continue to threaten us. Our response must be to embrace our Jewishness wholeheartedly. Each and every single one of us in this room and all those that are listening have a unique soul, a divine spark within. It's not about the outward appearances. It's about embracing our inner essence. Take action. Think of something you can do. Whether it's lighting Shabbat candles, wearing a kippah proudly, putting on tefillin, a fix a mezuzah, giving tzedakah, or saying a prayer. Let's commit to acts of Jewishness. No one, no one should ever feel that they're insignificant. Each person in this room has a power to make a difference. We will soon sing together, united as one. Music is the pen of our souls. We will unite with songs. Then we will dance. We will honor the survivors, some of the survivors of the NOAA festivals, festival who asked us to dance again. We won't let our enemies destroy us. We are broken, but we are proud. I want to share something that Sapir shared in her interview. When they asked her where she got the strength, she said, she believed it was from her parents. Every day, her parents would gather their friends together. And as people were coming, they were crying, they were sad. Her mother put on music. 
and said, I don't want you to cry. I want you to be happy. I want you to take your positive energy and send it to my daughter. This is the power of unity, of music, of love. Let's carry the strength forward. Let us be a beacon of hope for one another. And let us never forget Am Yisrael Chai. Please, let's say it together. Am Yisrael Chai. Am Yisrael Okay. 
נשמות עכשיו. אנא שמור לי הכל אלה, ויעלבו בבני נפשי, על השקט או הבכי, ועל זה אשיב. הכל אלה, הכל אלה, שמור לי אלי הטוב, על הדבש ו...
please rise. So thank you everybody so much for coming. As Jeremy mentioned, for anybody who would like, we're gonna do a few simple Israeli dances. Um, I just need to figure out how to plug in the music to that. It'll take just a moment, but we'd love to have you join us. And, or if you feel more comfortable just thinking about what we did this evening, you're also welcome to leave. We don't wanna hold you hostage, but thank you so much everybody for coming. Let's see how quickly it can do. 